Hi friends! It is time once again to talk about some arcs. Is this the same setup, the same shirt, the same video-ish as last week's video? Actually Tuesday's video, this is Thursday. The answer to all of that is yes. I read nine arcs at the same time I was DNFing the other six. I read nine arcs and we're gonna talk about those today. Uh, some of them we'll be talking about at the same time because I read a couple of um, like first and second books in a series. So let's just hop into it. The first book that we're going to talk about is Adult Assembly Required by Abby Waxman. This is a follow-up to The Bookish Life of Nina Hill, which is a follow-up to A Garden of Small Beginnings, I believe, is the first book that I haven't read yet because I didn't know that it was connected, and so now I need to read that, but that's a whole other thing for a whole other day. This book follows Laura, who is a college student who is homeless due to a fire she gets adopted by a ragtag group of strangers. Essentially, if you have read um, The Bookish Life of Nina Hill, you'll know that Nina works at a bookstore along with the owner of the bookstore and her other friend, whose name starts with a P. Polly? It's Polly, I think. It could not be Polly. Anyway, moving on. Her friend, whose name starts with a P. And essentially, uh, Laura ends up at this bookstore um, immediately after having lost everything that she owned in a fire. School hasn't started yet, it's raining outside, and essentially the people of the bookstore take pity on her and basically move her into um, where Polly lives at this old lady's house who she's like illegally rented out as like a bed and breakfast type deal. Okay. I will say it's not necessary to have read The Bookish Life of Nina Hill and The Garden of Small Beginnings, but if you don't want to know like how other relationships end up, it's good to read those first. And in that order, Garden of Small Beginnings, Bookish Life of Nina Hill, and then Adult Assembly Required. Okay. I love Waxman's character work. It is one of my favorite things. I gave this a 4.25 out of 5 stars. If I didn't say, can't remember, it's been 20 seconds. Don't know. Um, but I love her character work. I love the way that she builds these characters and makes them feel very realistic and very much they stay the character that they are. I mean, not that they don't have character growth because character growth is a thing, but they don't feel like they have like a weird character growth. They don't feel like, you know, something is completely out of left field. They feel normal and natural. There was not a lot of plot here, but I did enjoy what I got. And it is Polly because I made a note in my notes hoping for a book about Polly soon. Go me. I put her name in there. Look at that. I. It's a very cute romance. It involves a family that is like not the most supportive of Laura's life choices. Um, she left a fiance back home. She left college back home because everybody wanted her to be this person that she didn't want to be. And she was like, fuck y'all. I'm going to California and I'm gonna be who I want to be. And she finds a new family there and doesn't get rid of her old family, but finds a new family and people who, you know, really support her and a love interest. And it was a great time. I then read The Whispering Dead and The Ravenous Dead by Darcy Coates. I technically had an arc of The Ravenous Dead, but had to read The Whispering Dead first. Um, because again, Jessica doesn't pay attention to whether or not something is a sequel before she hits the request button. Uh, I gave book one a 3.25 and book two a 3.75 out of five stars. Book one could have been longer, but it definitely had really good creep factor. I read a book by Darcy Coates last fall, which was super creepy. This was like good creepy, but not like over the top creep factor, but definitely like had the creepy factor there. I guess I should tell you what the books are about. The Whispering Dead, The Ravenous Dead. Uh, the series follows a girl who is running, has no recollection of who she is, where she's from, what happened to her, but she knows her name and she knows what she thinks her name is. And she knows that people are chasing her. And she finds this priest who takes her in and hides her from the people who are chasing her. He puts her up in this cottage in like a graveyard, the church graveyard. Um, the caretaker used to live in the cottage. He's no longer living. We find out that she can see ghosts and she lives in a graveyard. 
Uh, so she starts to a try to figure out who she is, but also um, tries to help the ghosts figure out their unfinished business and help them move on. And she meets a really cute guy from town and a completely crazy girl from town who is like a complete conspiracy theorist. And I love these characters. Like they are so fantastic, like outlandish, but also perfect. Love them so much. Um, but like I said, book one could have been longer, but definitely had very good creep factor and was good. Book two was more sp more spooky than the first and also had a better plot and more backstory. We got to see a little bit of like who she was running from and maybe even a little bit of why. And I am so excited for the third book. Super excited. I then read Daughter by Kate McLaughlin. Daughter was different than what I was expecting. Daughter follows a teenager who finds out that her father is actually a serial killer and not like you know he killed five or six people they know of like 12 and they think there's like probably 50 or 60 more yeah he's a serial killer and she did not know this she finds out that her mom basically moved away changed their names and has been living estranged from her entire family her whole life um, just because of the way that things happened when her father got caught and went to trial. I give this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. The book kind of starts off with the teenager finding out that, again, her father is a serial killer, but he wants her to come and meet him. Uh, he's dying and he wants to meet his daughter. He's met her, you know, when she was a baby, but hasn't seen her since. And basically says, if you come and see me, I will tell the police or I'll tell you specifically where some of the other bodies are and who some of the other bodies are. And he's dying from cancer. He's not doing it well. And she decides that while it's not necessarily in her best mental health interest, she wants to go and try to help the families of these victims of her father. So it was definitely not what I was expecting. I expected a mystery thriller, but did get more of a romance slash coming of age story. It definitely was romance forward, but it is a YA. So that, you know, that should have clicked in my brain. Um, I did like it. It definitely hit me in the feels. It made me cry. I think one of the things that really worked for me in this was seeing the interactions between our teenager, the daughter of a serial killer and her father's victim's families. Um, it was a weird look at the way our minds work and um, seeing like her addressing, um, you know, the members of families of her father's victims with their permission, of course, um, and like talking to them and trying to find out more about their daughters, them being okay with that, like them being okay with talking to the daughter of the man who killed their daughters. It was very interesting. And it was a, it's a viewpoint of the human mind and the human psyche. And I always love those kinds of things. Um, if you are interested in mystery thriller, but are like, you know, in your late teens, early twenties, and you're not sure that you're ready to go quite there yet, I think that it is a good bridge book between YA and adult, as far as like a mystery thriller goes. I then read Bright Ruined Things by Samantha Coho. This was about a girl who lives on an island who does not have magic, but everyone, like the family who lives on the island is big on magic and she has been waiting her whole life for the specific night so that she can ask the family to teach her magic along with her best friend, um, her best male friend and her best female friend. She's had a crush on her male friend for like her entire life, but I mean, he's like the only guy her age. So like, why not that she's ever met? She's lived on this island her whole life and she only knows this family. So apparently the ancestors of this family found the island, found the magic there and took the magic for themselves. I gave this a 3.25 out of 5 stars. It was just okay. Um, I don't feel like there was anything special about the plot or the characters. I almost DNF'd it several times, uh, a lot of times. And it had some really weird romance aspects to it. It's like, there was like an arranged marriage but not but like I love this guy but I actually don't actually know any other guys anyway and it was weird um the why we have magic plot was real stupid 
um, and never really flesh out in any way that made me interested in it. Like the why does the family have magic? Oh, this is why they have magic? That's stupid. As I just said that her plot lines are stupid. <sighs> I love Samantha Coho. Like, I follow her on social media. I think she's fantastic. I love her. But I don't know that I'll pick up any more of her books because they're just okay to me. Um, I don't like the way that her books are open-ended. And I often find myself feeling at the end of the book that the last, like, sixth of the book has no bearing in context for the other five-sixths of the book. This one more so than the first one that I read, but I just don't, her stories just don't work for me. And that's okay. We then have Let the Monster Out by Chad Lucas. This is about Bones. It's a mid-grade. Bones, who is the new kid in town, and when he starts seeing some weird things in town, he needs help from his baseball teammates to stop an evil corporation from making them all live their worst nightmares. I gave this a 2.75 out of 5 stars, which if you know me and my love of mid-grade is weird. So this had too much baseball and science jargon for me. So I feel like the target age bracket for this may struggle keeping up or being interested, especially if the kids don't like baseball. Like it was very baseball forward, which was surprising to me because the book was supposed to be about monsters and dreams. I get that like it's his baseball team, but I didn't know that I was being sold baseball so heavily when I, you know, read the synopsis. It does have a varied cast of characters. I do think that uh, Chad did a great job of like having these characters that are, um, you know, includes a lot of different minorities and people in his cast of characters. That was fantastic. But I didn't enjoy the plot. It was just kind of there. I don't want to say it was too simple and like there weren't any surprises because it's made for eight-year-olds and that's kind of the point. But I just didn't, there was no joy in it for me. And like mid-grade spooky to me is, it makes me happy. Like it makes, it's like one of my favorite things to read. And this just did not hit for me. We then have When Sparks Fly and Starry Eyed Love by Helena Hunting. Um, this was another case of Jessica not realizing that when she picked up Starry Eyed Love, that it was the second book in a series. So of course she had to read the first book. You don't have to. Like, the story is the story is the story. But I mean, if you're going to read the romance, you might as well read the first one. So I gave the first book a 3.75 out of 5 stars and the second book a 4.25. And I have so many questions about why I did that. But it's, it's, it's how I feel. So the first book, which is When Sparks Fly, is about a girl, I believe she's the oldest of three girls, and she lives with her best male friend, and they have always just been platonic friends their whole lives, and she gets in this really bad car accident, and he has to take care of her, and in him taking care of her, they kind of fall for each other. It's a romance, you know what I mean? Um, so it is a very decent spicy romance. It didn't have any rom-com humor that I like, but it did deal a lot with healthy character growth, um, and I fully support that. It was Best Friends to Lovers. We had a Demi heroine, which of course we love. Um, it does deal heavily with death due to car accidents, death of a parent as children, and we see Avery, who is the main character, we see her accident on page from Declan, who is our hero's point of view. Um, while he's on the phone with her. He's on the phone with her while she's in this major accident. Um, so if that is something that you struggle with, you need to know that going in. Because again, it is on page and it is like we're in the moment while it's happening. Book two was following the middle sister. I believe it's the middle sister. They're either, it's definitely not the youngest sister. I think it's oldest, middle, youngest. But don't quote me on that. Um, but we're following the middle sister and she is just broken up with someone at the end of the first book and they're out at a bar and she meets this guy and he tries to give her his number and she's like I just broke up with somebody I'm not interested and then fast forward like nine months or whatever into the future and the girls run this inn that their family used to own called the Spark House and they are trying to um, like get bigger promotions and, and build the brand of their company. And lo and behold, the guy that gave tried to give her his number is like the head of this company that's trying to give them money. It's a whole thing. It was just as good as the first book, but it dealt more with the sister relationship. 
and it had more backstory with the sister drama and I think that is why I liked this book more because like the first book is like a slow burn love romance with a demi heroine which is like me yeah and the second book is like uh, I met this guy last week and I'm going to fuck him over the back of the couch like not me and me but I liked this book better you know what I mean like okay anyway the romance was a bit rushed for me in the second book but it made sense for the story and there was a lot of drama like a bucket ton of drama uh but it was good I had a, I had a good time reading it and I'm very excited for the third book there were some major changes made at the end of the second book as far as like the life of the sisters and I'm excited to see how that plays out in and just one more to talk about our final book is The Resting Place by Camilla Sten this is about a girl who inherits her grandmother who raised her summer house. She and her aunt and her boyfriend and a lawyer go to the summer house to like try to clear it out or to like see what's there because they haven't been there um, to decide like how to sell it, whatever. And it is like a murder mystery type book. I gave this a 3.75 out of 5 stars. This book made me sad, which is weird. Uh, since the prologue and the epilogue, the entirety of the book takes place at the country house in the middle of nowhere in winter during a blizzard. So if you like a closed in setting, this one's going to be for you. It had a lot of creep factor and foreboding. And I think that the atmosphere was great. I love the way that the atmosphere was built up. My issue was the characters. I didn't really like any of the characters and they were just okay people. Uh, they were well written, but like I didn't like them, if that makes sense. The mystery was not very surprising and was also very heartbreaking for me. Um, I have a full spoiler review on my blog for this one if you're interested. Um, because I started, instead of sharing these on Goodreads, we're gonna be sharing them on my blog from now on. Um, but yes, I have a full spoiler review like on my blog if you want to know more of like my spoiler thoughts of the book in particular. Finding out the plot twist really, it just made me sad. Like I don't think I've ever, like I had an idea of what the plot twist was going to be and I was way wrong, but like it was depressing. So I don't know. The book was definitely creepy and I will definitely pick up more from this author in the future. Um, because I didn't give it a bad rating. I just didn't like the characters, though I don't think they were supposed to be, and it made me sad, and I don't think it was supposed to. So there's that. That's going to be it for me today. If you have read any of these, or if you have any comments, questions, or concerns, uh, please hit me up in the comment section down below. Uh, as I said, I will have links to all of these on my blog in the description box down below for you. That is all I have for today. I post reading, writing, book, and planner related videos a couple of times a week. If you don't want to miss anything I have going on in the future, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell down below. And until then, I will see you guys next time. Bye! My heart is so hollow.